Retro Racing Reports from Ascot Park, Gardena, California, 1964. We have two programs to present today. One of them is from November 14th, and it's a 100-lap national championship stock car race. This happens to be the final race of the 1964 USAC stock car season, and it was 100 laps at Ascot Park. We don't have a story in the program, but it's got this way cool picture of Parnelli Jones here on the cover, and there's a lot going on inside from the annotations of our buddy Tim Kennedy. Parnelli Jones wound up winning in the end, as you'll see. The second program is the purple cover, and it features Parnelli Jones and Joe Leonard. It features Jones and Leonard because Jones was the champion for USAC 1964 and Joe Leonard was the Rookie of the Year. And the 300 lap national championship race is the first race of the 1965 season, even though it took place in December of 1964. There are a couple of uh, newspaper articles in here and that's where we're drawing our information from this time around. So hold on to your hats. An interesting point in this program is there's an article in here about Joe Leonard, USAC Stock Cars Rookie of the Year for 1964, and nothing on Parnelli Jones. Hmm, don't know why. This article is by Jim Smith, USAC Publicity Director. Joe Leonard, USAC Stock Car Rookie of the Year, tired of racing motorcycles after he had won the national championship three times. He tired of racing modified stock cars after traveling the West Coast circuit for a few years. As a rookie in the United States Auto Club circuit, Leonard faced his stiffest challenge, winning against some of the world's greatest drivers. And if his rookie season is any indication of what is to come, it shouldn't take Joe too long. He won a wonder miler at DeCoin, Illinois in his 1964 Dodge and has been a contender in every race this year. He holds track records at DuCoin and Langhorne, Pennsylvania. He was running second in his first race at Langhorne, a one-mile dirt track, when the rear end failed. He lost another rear at Indianapolis Raceway Park while running fourth. The second time he tried a road course at Castle Rock, Colorado, he drove his Dodge to third place. He finished sixth and 11th in the 150 milers at Milwaukee and fifth in the 250 miler there. The 6'2", 200 pound native of San Jose, California, was leading a 100 miler at Springfield when he ran out of gas with six laps remaining and he finished third. He wrecked in a 100 miler at the Indiana State Fairgrounds and was running second to Indy champion A.J. Foyt in the Langhorn 250 when a connecting rod broke. Leonard is a quiet type who keeps his eyes and ears open and looks for any tips that might make the difference between success and failure. He listens to teammate Foyt, who calls Leonard a real pro. Well, he studies things, says Foyt. He studies the tracks and the way the other drivers run them. He learns quickly. He's going to be a real good stock car driver. Biggest reason is he races only to win and wants to be more than an average driver. And that's what it takes. Leonard explains why he left the West Coast. Well, I got tired of running motorcycles because there was no place to go. There was nothing new. I started driving Modifieds and was lucky enough to get a pretty good car. After a while, Modifieds lost their novelty too. I wanted to move on to something even more exciting. Leonard is simply an eager 31-year-old who wants to compete. And only time will tell whether or not he tires of stock car racing, which now offers him the biggest challenge. But as Foyt puts it, Give him a little more time and he'll do it. In fact, he's already beat us all. From the Herald Examiner. Fine name there, Herald. It's from Monday, December 7th, 1964. Roger Ward, 43-year-old driver from Indianapolis and two-time winner of the Indy 500 Mile Classic, drove a 1964 Mercury to victory yesterday at Ascot Park in a 300-lap U.S. Auto Club late model stock car race before 7,500 fans. Ward took the lead for the second time on the 290th lap when Joe Leonard of San Jose, USAC Stock Car Rookie of the Year, 
blew his second tire in his 1964 Dodge. Leonard's crew changed the tire and he finished second, two laps behind a veteran Ward's winning time. The race was the first point scoring stock car event on USAC's 1965 schedule. The 64 champ, Pernelli Jones of Torrance, had the race apparently locked up when he blew a connecting rod on his 64 Mercury on the 258th lap and he finished ninth. Second article from the LA Times credited to Bob Thomas. Happiness is winning a 300 lap auto race. Surprise is lasting long enough to do it. Roger Ward did both on Sunday at Ascot Park where the two-time Indianapolis champion won the year's final U.S. Auto Club stock car race. Ward appeared to do it handily in a 1964 Bill Strop Mercury, finishing two laps ahead of second place Joe Leonard of San Jose. Mm, but he didn't. So who's in front? Well, in fact, if Leonard hadn't blown a tire on his 64 Dodge just 12 laps from the end, he might have been the winner. And there was considerable confusion at the end as to which driver was leading. Ward, his crew, and many of the confused 7,500 fans thought that he and his 64 Mercury were in front. The scoreboard smiled on Leonard. The shattered tire may have taken the scorers off the hook. Attrition helped Ward no little bit, although he had troubles of his own around the half-mile dirt oval. The 1964 USAC stock car champion and Ward's teammate, Cornelli Jones, took an early and commanding lead. After two pit stops, Jones still managed to have the front position. Then on the 262nd lap, his Mercury developed engine trouble and he dropped out. I don't know exactly what it was, he said. It just seemed to quit running, then froze up completely. Then there was a costly spin. Ward handicapped himself on the second lap. He got out of shape in the second turn. Then Lloyd Ruby tapped me at the same time and threw me sideways, he said. The spin sent him to the back of the 24 car field. But by the 66th lap, he had worked his way back up to second place. Ward had another handicap. His car kept slipping out of gear. He said, I couldn't slow down in the turns, he said. Once I kissed the wall pretty good. He did, about 25 laps from the finish. Fortunately, traffic was light as the field had thinned to a dozen cars, and he straightened himself out. Mechanical difficulties eliminated several contenders, including former national champions Don White of Keokuk, Iowa, and Norm Nelson of Racine, Wisconsin, Lloyd Ruby of Wichita Falls, Texas, and Lynn Sutton of Portland. Ruby blew his engine in second place on the 293rd lap. Words time was officially 2 hours, 19.87 seconds, and he earned $1,500 for the effort. Hey, this is Errol. Glad you enjoyed that video. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, put your comments down below. There's a lot more where this one came from.